public imagination, there are two views of addicts' responsibility for their very bad behavior. On the one hand, some people think they're fully responsible, perhaps because they are responsible for being addicted in the first place, or perhaps because even while addicted, they could do the right thing simply by muscling down and overcoming the impulse to take the drug or to do other bad things in service of their addiction. The alternative view is that they're fully non-responsible because addiction is a disease, bad behavior is a symptom of that disease, they're no more responsible for that bad behavior than they would be responsible for, for instance, coughing when they have tuberculosis. And in the talk that I gave, I try to plot a middle way between these two extremes, according to which addicts have diminished responsibility for their bad behavior, but are still properly held responsible for it. And the main idea that motivates that is the idea that often, for an addict to comply, they would have to bear a variety of severe burdens that non-addicts would not have to bear in order to do the right thing. And I think those burdens make a difference to their responsibility for their bad behavior. It varies by the severity of the burden. So, if the addiction is peculiarly powerful, making it the case that the addict would have to suffer even greater diminution in their autonomy in order to comply with the demands on them, then, then the subsequent diminution in their responsibility is proportional to that. Other addicts are, have less severe addictions in which there isn't this same degree of diminution of their autonomy, and for them, the burdens are less, and so their responsibility is greater. Now, are you, are we talking philosophy here, or are you willing to go to court on this? I'm willing to go to court on that. <laughs>